Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Saba, and today we're investigating a very common type of exotic options, that is, barrier options, and we'll investigate both knock-in and knock-out calls and puts, learn how to calculate their payoff structure, and how to visualize those in a graph. Many thanks to Stephen Huntley for suggesting this topic for this video. So let's start. The barrier options overall are an exotic type of options. It means that they are more complicated contracts than your vanilla options, and they can be uh, knock in and knock out in terms of some barrier price H. H stands for hurdle, and uh, that is a price that shapes the payoff structure of barrier options um, additionally to the strike price and the premium. The barrier price is a level that the underlying price must cross for the option to become active or inactive, if we're talking about knock-in and knock-out options, respectively. So, for example, calls can be up and in and up and out. An up and in call option would be inactive unless the underlying price during the lifetime of the option contract does not reach the barrier price H, whereas an up and out uh, call option would remain active unless the barrier price H is reached over the lifetime of the option contract. Whereas for puts, there is a direct analogy with down and in and down and out. Down and in uh, puts would remain inactive unless the barrier price H uh, is reached. So if the underlying does fall at or below the barrier, it would become active, whereas the down and out would be a knockout option and it would cease to be active. It would become inactive if the barrier is reached. For the sake of simplicity, let's model center price uh, knock in and knock out options. So for example, let's say that our strike would be a hundred dollars per share, for example, for all four of our options that we seek to model today, all options would have a premium of five, and the barrier would be 115 for calls. It's, again, very typical and very logical for uh, barrier calls to have a barrier price that exceeds the strike, whereas for the puts, it is quite conventional to have a barrier price that is below the strike, for example, 85. Then we can model a range of underlying prices that will strive to calculate the payoffs of our barrier options for, and let's use the sequence function to simplify that. And for barrier options modeling, so that the graphs look prettier, we need to preserve a quite high level of granularity. So let's go for 501 rows and one column, we just need one column of underlying prices, and um, that means that we'll have to simulate the prices from $75 per share with a step of uh, 10 cents per share, $0.1 per share, which would bring us from 75 up to 125, with 100 being right at the center, being our center price, quite naturally. So for an up and in call, we would, first of all, subtract the premium, that's something that, as in case of uh, vanilla options, conventional options, we pay uh, regardless of the outcome. Again, we are modeling long contracts here. Short contracts would be exactly the reverse. And then we need to add the typical um, long call uh, payoff structure, which is the maximum of zero, and the difference between the underlying price that we need to lock the column for, but not the row, minus the strike price. And here, again, the um, financial implications of it are quite simple. As 
uh, the call option uh, gives us an opportunity but not the obligation to buy at the strike, we would exercise our call if the underlying price is uh, in excess of the strike, if the option is out of the money, and uh, gain the profit, which is the difference between the underlying price and the strike. We'll basically buy at the strike and sell at the market price. However, in case of the barrier options, we would only be able to exercise that if the option remains active. For the up and in uh, call option, we would have this opportunity if the underlying price is at or above the barrier, meaning that we have to multiply it by the if function, and if would be, well, the underlying price is at or above, so greater or equal to the barrier, again, lock in the row for a barrier and the column for the underlying price. If that's the case, then one and zero otherwise. Then we can enforce this payoff structure throughout the range of our underlying prices. And here at the graph, we would have the payoff structure for the up and in call. Unlike the conventional vanilla call option, that would have an increase in payoff structure throughout the uh, out of the money, uh, the up and in call kicks in only when the underlying is above the barrier price H. So our payoff structure is flat and negative, we just um, lose the premium, all the way until the price is 115, which is our barrier. And if the barrier price is reached and exceeded, we gain um, ever and ever increasing upside, just in case of the regular long call. So here we see that the up and in call is quite a bit less valuable than the uh, conventional long call, given that you would have upside over here for your conventional long call. However, that would be a little bit cheaper in terms of the premium, and that gives you exposure to this particular payoff structure, which conventional options do not allow you to get. And again, that's the main idea of financial engineering in general, and exotic options in particular, that those are designed to give you exposure to payoff structures that other instruments do not provide. In terms of the up and out call, we can drag this formula across and modify it so that the new logic, the new logic of the knockout barrier option is preserved. And here, the only thing that we need to change is that the option would be inactive if the uh, barrier is reached or exceeded and active if it's not. And let's see how it affects the payoff structure. For the up and out call, the payoff structure is uh, to some extent the reverse. We do gain the uh, conventional long call exposure, but only until the underline reaches 115. At 115, the option ceases to be active and we continue to just lose the premium if the share price is in excess of that. And that can be um, nicely corresponded to various uh, forecasts that an option trader might have. For an up and in call, the trader, as we see from the payoff structure, from the exposure, is extremely bullish. They are willing to forgo the upside if the share price just moderately increases for the exchange of a tremendous upside if the share price is uh, ahead of the barrier, whereas for the up and out call, the trader is a little bit less uh, bullish, is a little bit less uh, high volatility, as here we see that the trader is willing to accept the upside only if the share price is, uh, well, between 105 and 115. That's the only range of prices when the trader breaks even and gains positive profits. And uh, what is also quite neat for those two uh, options is that we add, if we add those two together, we would get exactly the payoff structure of a conventional uh, long call. And that is something that is handy for valuation purposes. That is perhaps something that we're going to investigate in one of the further videos if you're interested in barrier options and uh, some of their more detailed specificities. Now, we just need to move on to our put contracts. And for the down and in put, we can copy this particular formula around and uh, 
change uh, the formula so that it reflects the logic of a down and in port. First of all, the source of the upside for the port is the reverse difference. It's the difference between the strike and the underlying price, simply because the uh, long put gives you an opportunity, but not the obligation, to sell at the strike. So if the option is in the money, if the underlying price is below the strike, you can buy uh, at the market and sell at the strike. And the only other difference that we need to take into account is when this option becomes active. So the option becomes active if and only if the underlying price goes at or below the barrier. So here we just change this formula to lesser than or equal to, and that corresponds to the down and in put payoff structure with flat um, downside equal to the premium if the share price is uh, above the barrier, but the option kicks in at a very high payoff when the share price is at or below the barrier, the hurdle price of 85. And again, this strategy can be considered as very high volatility barrier strategy, as you're willing to forgo the upside if the share price is between 85 and uh, 100, for a higher upside if the share price goes further down, below the barrier of 85. And uh, the idea is that obviously the down and in put would be cheaper in terms of premium uh, than the conventional uh, long put with no barriers involved. Finally, for the down and out put, we can copy this formula and change the conditions here so that the option becomes inactive when the hurdle, the barrier price of 85 is reached or broken through. And that visualizes the payoff structure with uh, increasing uh, upside if the share price goes further and further down up until 85 when the option ceases to be active, when it becomes inactive and the payoff structure remains flat at negative five ever since. One of the uh, other considerations that you need to take into account when modeling these options is that they depend on the path the price uh, goes through uh, before maturity, even if those barrier options are European, even if you can exercise them only at maturity, they would become active or inactive depending on where the price goes throughout the contract period. Because, for example, if the down and in put is held and uh, the share price falls to 80 but later on goes up to 90, the option still is uh, active, however, the uh, payoff that you'll get would be smaller. Uh, this is something that those payoff charts cannot um, adequately represent, and that's why we need, when modeling, uh, evaluating, or pricing these options, to simulate or take into account analytically the path the share price can uh, take throughout the lifetime of the option contract. And that's all there is for the basics and visualizations of barrier options, including both knock-in and knock-out options, that is up and in call, down and in put, up and out call, and down and out put. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics topics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.